fix this. I'm going to figure it out. Is the schedule going to be here or? No. no. This is it. Oh. Okay. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, we're going to just go ahead and we, I see we have just everybody just dying to be here. So welcome to Commissioner's Court. It's 10 a.m. on the 23rd of August. The roll call Commissioner Yower is not here. He's in San Antonio with the historical commissioner. Commissioner Rosales is here. here. Jeff Shaw is here. Commissioner Schindel's at a doctor's appointment. Commissioner Hummel. I think he's here. <laughs> are you, are, is it a good guess, you think? Uh, Carol with the county clerk's office. Here. Please stand and join us in the opening prayer. Thank you very much, please. Heavenly Father, we ask for your uh, guidance as we make decisions for cars today. We ask that you be with our friends and family wherever they may be. And God bless our troops wherever they may be. In your name we pray, amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, that's a little Jess. I thought that was my nephew. When I saw that hair walking through the door, I was like, yeah, I thought that was one of mine, and I was like, hey. Um, and he's never been here before. Uh, so number five would be presentation and recommendation for the award of employee benefits package for the fiscal year 2013. That's Luana. Luana probably hadn't made it over here yet. She's still probably crunching numbers. Hello. She's right here. Well, where were you? <laughs> She's been here. Well, thank you. I was sitting tall, too. I was like, please. <laughs> Let me scoot back. Son. You're still asleep. You need to get that other chair. It makes you taller. Yeah, exactly. And exactly. what we had decided prior to is we usually use a committee to do this, and we had decided since we were running short to use commissioner's court to do this. So yesterday, everybody had come in and presented. We had, I guess, four or five companies that actually did a presentation for insurance, and then it answered some of the broker questions that Luana had submitted prior to. And James was in an accident and wasn't able to be here yesterday, so he hasn't had time to research his insurance proposals yet. They're all still sitting here. And so I don't know exactly what we need to do today. I'm quite confused because there's there's three of us here and only two of us have heard the presentations or have been able to look at what has been presented to the court. And I don't know if you're ready to make a decision without not having been able to review your information or hear the presentations or be able to... I see what you I see what you mean. I feel like I'm putting you in a very awkward situation. Right now, no. to do something no, that you I, have no knowledge of. I understand. Can I yeah. offer an interjection? Yes, ma'am. Although we are very limited on our possibilities for health insurance, since we only had Humana come back and do an offer, that's kind of a no-brainer. That, right. That's where we'll be. I think the decision that needs to be made, and we also know premiums or potential premiums, so I can crunch the numbers that are needed. I think the decision that is pending with the court is an the agent. agent. An agent, yeah. And then once that agent is decided, further details could be worked out as far as if we're bundling, if, you know, which life insurance we're going to go with, which dental insurance we're going to go with. Okay, I understand. Which. So it, Humana's, it's come, Humana's it, yeah. Humana will be the health, yes. So it's just the agent. Did, right. Correct. So that's not a decision to be made. If the court wants to discuss or let any of the agents here discuss their services or if the court wants to go into executive session to discuss the services offered or if the court wants to delay assigning awarding the agent of record to one of the meetings next week or something, I don't know how that will affect open enrollment. We'll do it today. Do you think you can um, we're looking at open enrollment. I guess anybody could answer this, but uh, probably uh, Jess there. Uh, I think I know what a 170% loss ratio means, but could you please clarify that for me? Sure. Uh, we had more claims paid than premiums paid in. So it's uh, we would like to see 
company shooting for generally about an 80% loss ratio would be considered favorable. Um, but um, we have been, had some he heavy utilizers this year with some chronic conditions that caused us to have such bad losses. And uh, of course, like I explained in my binder, went out to the marketplace and there was no one that was competitive could offer a proposal. And quite frankly, we have other brokers in the room with a 170% loss ratio. Uh, with my knowledge of being in the business 20 years, a 15% increase, we don't like any increases, of course, but is actually quite fair. And that some of the letters that explain that in my binder from the carriers, uh, you know, strengthen that as a factual comment. So, um, Humana, you know, wants to be a partner and uh, not having some negotiating with uh, Aetna or United Healthcare or Cigna being able to offer a number that I could renegotiate with Humana, we're kind of not stuck. Humana's done a good job. They paid a lot out in claims. We uh, found out yesterday we had some issues and uh, I tried to ask Dr. Tracy who the doctor was so we can make sure we take care of any problems that we have. But uh, Humana and I, I, the, the bundling, if you want me to get into that, I can because I do feel like there's a way to reduce that 15% renewal and actually it's an advantage for the employees of the county. Um, and if you'd like me to go into that, I kind of put it on a, you know, made it more visible to you because I, I talked about it yesterday, but and it's in the binder, but it spells it out a lot more simpler here. So. Yes, ma'am. Just a little comment when you talked about Tracy's. I got all his doctor's cards from him, made a copy of them, in fact, it's a tears up. Okay. And my response from her was, well, he just needs to call and tell them to put them on the network. But I, I ran into that so problem too. My issue was why should, as an agent or as the person, you know, dealing with it, you know, I felt like your office should have done that. Of and I don't course. know how much you communicate with your employees or anything, but that was not a good deal. And the same thing going back to the one that had passed away, and we had worked on the, that small little itty bitty claim, and you know, just getting forms and stuff from, from Jess's office on that one. You know, there was just some little issues that I have had. And I know Barbara has had some issues with some of the claims, and I don't know if it's your office or if it was necessarily Humana themselves not paying on some of your stuff, and I don't want to get too much on your personal stuff, and I know Luana had some issues too. Not you, well, you know. But, but just, I, I told Vi, so I'm okay by her saying that. It's I'm just, going, just a mean, little thing. I had issues of stuff not You know, so that. for you to sit there and say that Humana could get them on the network, well, we tried to do that for Tracy, and I sent that stuff to your office and did not get a, my, that was my response from her, was all he has to do is call them and ask them to be part of the network. No, that's not our norm. Go ahead. Well, I was just thinking, and I don't know if that's the case, and I don't, I don't know that I know what I'm talking about, but it could have been a pre-existing condition. That he well, had. it was just his doctors were not in network. They're all out of Victoria. They weren't part of the network, the Humana network, because I think he has Blue Cross Blue Shield. And I was trying to help him get them, you know, in network for him so they would pay for him. And he was, and I don't blame him. He's he's had these doctors for 25 years and didn't want right. to change doctors to end that work stuff. Well, normally if they're contracted with Blue Cross, they will accept the contract from Humana. We've tried to get involved and call the doctor's office to try to expedite that. And a lot, quite frankly, a lot of times we'll know the doctor. Right. Um, so, uh, I think the majority of them are Victoria doctors, so you probably have heard them who they were at one time or another. But I would love to get my hands around that issue and take care of it and get it solved. And if uh, that response was given out of my office, I apologize for that because that's not the way we take care of business. Right, right. Our that, retention that, level, I, I think I have to make a comment about being having success in this business and taking care of customers and having a retention rate in the 90 percentile. We do not keep customers by doing that type of right, action. Right. In Humana, we are a, a leaders club producer with Humana. I have uh, this renewal was starting to be massaged before the renewal was released and a lot has to do with that is with my relationship with Humana and like I said 15% on 170% loss ratio is a fair renewal. 
any actuarial underwriter would tell you that. Problems with Humana, because we're a leader's club producer with Humana, if there's a claim issue, it's expedited quicker than a normal agent that just is, has a Humana contract. That is factual. That's not just blowing smoke up. We want to take care of our customers. I live for this business. I'm devoted to it, and I want. I hear things like that, and I want to take care of it. The life claim that you that we mentioned about was very helpful for everybody involved, but it it was not something that just was easily taken care of. That was something else that was based on relationships in this business. Twenty years of being well, successful. Well, I'm doing talking about right that thing. little twenty five hundred dollar policy. Oh, the twenty five hundred dollars one that they're that he is refusing to pay. This really, twenty five hundred dollars? Really? Can I can I address that though? You know, we have a, a voluntary product that was that was a uh, offered as part of the ability to get a discount is one of the reasons we wanted to offer it which was a nice feature and some people took this product but with all of these voluntary products there is a pre-existing condition period and it's generally 12 months and that we fought that claim we right. sent it to appeal i got involved i got with humana but we could not get them to reverse their decision because the doctor there was pre-existing on that claim and uh, we got involved we called the insured and explained it to him and it was unfortunate we fight for our customers that you know the pre-existing came into play on that voluntary product I didn't uh, listen during the enrollment process last year because I knew mm -hmm. what I wanted to do mm -hmm. I signed my papers and went on my way was that revealed during the discussion that there are pre-existing exceptions well I know that we when we did the enrollment last year we had Humana people involved as well right. explaining those products because that was unique to a division of Humana so yes it pre-existing is explained it's in the brochure I don't have those brochures with me but it's typical of those type of products uh, do I have it recorded where I do sure. not have that proof. I just but. didn't know if that was standard procedure when they're trying to sell. I that, and I don't remember it being a proof this thing being brought up. And the, and the gentleman that had bought the policy did very due diligence about things that he, because he knew of his health, sure. about buying policies for the family. And I don't think he would have bought something if he would known that a pre-existing condition it would not have covered him for, for a year. I mean, well, I, I, I can't, it, the man has passed, and I can't speak for that. But I know where it sits now, and we discussed this, and we're still trying to do that, is get that man's <laughs> premium refunded to And him. it's just two months of premium. All he paid was October and I, I think I think that one of the other issues, I think Vi has had a lot more complaints than that, because when I walked in there, I think when Vi and I were talking, when, when I was complaining about it, because I just told him, forget it, I have insurance, use my insurance. I mean, if, if I had my way, I would just, I would rather not take county insurance because my insurance is really good insurance. And I can't exempt myself is what I've been told. Right. It's part and, of the benefits. You're right. But she can decline them. I'll do it. Yeah, I was going to say, you Judge Kennedy, all the charge. time that he was here, he didn't yeah. take no county insurance. And he, the health. He took that, the yeah, the health. Can I interject something? So when I was um, diving in and going out to market, I pulled, um, I looked at the large claimant report as well as your premium versus claims. Your premium versus claims, you, you guys ran at 188.25% this year, not 170%. So a little worse than 170%. But when you take a deeper dive into that, and the, that premium versus claims report can be pulled twice a year. So someone at the county should be privy to that information through your broker twice a year. You should get a mid-year snapshot, and then again at renewal, you should see that large claimant report. Your broker should also take a deeper dive and look at that large claimant report. One being, when I took a deeper dive into it, I realized that one of the large claimants has since deceased. If you do not make note of that and send that to the carriers that are competing for your business, they're not going to know and they're going to see that as a larger risk. Um, the other three large claimants that the report was showing, come to find out that was all the same person. And the way Humana pulls that report, it looked like it was four large claimants, when in reality it was just two, and then in reality it was just one because the other one had deceased. 
that was a problem for me going out to market with these other carriers because the other brokers in this process did not take that deeper dive. And so I just want you guys to be aware of some of the behind the scenes things that go on as well as the county is, that's your claims data. So Vi and Julie, whoever is handling the HR portion of benefits should be privy to that information at least twice a year. Were you yeah, which I didn't know I, I could, but I know when I had asked, and I feel like I'm picking on Jess here, <laughs> when I asked the office, Tirzo, we kind of like, well, and I kind of discussed it with Luana too, you know, she told me then we could only get it twice a year. So when we asked for it, um, there was a problem with we asked for it now and then when we get closer to renewal trying to ask for it again that's your two twice a year kind of thing I mean she got it for us because mm -hmm. I sent the forms and stuff and everything but it was kind of she was kind of hesitant to give it to us because I and I think we've kind of talked about it before we go out so early on bids before renewal but we have to so Luana can put all the numbers in and the commissioner's court can figure out the budget I mean we know it's not till October 1st but but we this can't year wait until we went out so much later, later. We than, went later than normal. In a comment, in a comment, some companies are using the numbers and getting claims, especially when you get to that hundred plus. Okay, and under a hundred lives, it becomes more of a problem to expedite getting claims. And but we're in a large group. We are right. No, you yeah. under y'all used to work, and I think there's a little bit of y'all used to be with Humana in Louisville that's, right. that's 100 now you're with Green Bay oh so we're a smaller group okay and, I had and, it and, and if y'all want to get uh, two reports a year we can do that this is an open open maybe we're having some progress here about communicating and delivering exactly what the county needs but shouldn't you as your and, my agent just automatically give that to me every six months or something just because uh, just, because? just because no but it can be requested I mean because and, it really I mean, we know we know what's going on in the county because we're a small county. I could have told her who the big claims were without even having to look at names, just because. But you know, if that's something that needed to be considered. Was that considered when? With, well, that's when where they were out for bids. It becomes a problem when you have different brokers submitting different information. If I'm the only broker that made those notes that this person was deceased and these other three claimants were the same person, and no other broker does that. Those carriers, they don't like that. They don't like difference of. So, in my opinion, if I were the broker, those notes would be on that claims data before the RFP goes out, so that every broker is privy to that same information. It shouldn't be where the other brokers have to come in and make calls to, you know, buy and them and find out what's going on. It should be that all of the information that's pulled, and that's looking out for the best interest of the county. And I'm just being honest. I'm looking for the out for the best interest for the county. I take this out to market, show the claims. We can call the actuarials at each company. They've been explained exactly the detailed claimant list. Who's we, we were aware of the deceased. We paid three death claims out of here. Um, I take offense to her comments. I have a listing of references in that binder that I've had clients with that do I do an excellent job and that's why they keep me as their broker. And I automatically go out to bid, do the research. It's a, this is a public bid which is different of course. We deal with a lot with private business where there is a trust. And I'm trying if I can do anything today is develop a deeper trust with y'all knowing that I'm going to take care of you each and every year. Well, <clears throat> I need a little education myself, but if I'm Humana and I'm going to bid this thing and there's four deaths that's occurred and I'm, I'm not privy to that, I don't know that I don't have to worry about them anymore because they're not on the health insurance plan anymore. Yes, you are if you're they, Humana. If you're Humana, but not if you're United Healthcare, Aetna, Blue Cross, Blue Shield. But the so thing like about it, you, Carl, those you, you death you claims would, aren't Humana. Those were on principle. That's principle. That was a separate insurance. Well, the, what, the point that I'm trying to make is if they're deceased, they're not on our health care anymore. Right. That's am, am I correct there? Yeah, that's correct. Right. Okay, correct. so. But you well, don't know. Uh, but I that's don't know not. They know that. That's not indicated on the large claims history. Just the treatment and the, the dollar amount. amounts and Humana's ID number assigned to those so claims. If, if I'm anyone other than the current broker, 
I'm not going to be privy to that information. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Well, all the, the claims report were given to the county. Right. And the county right. We asked as far as right. to. Uh, right. Yeah, that's pretty well, simple. I mean, if I, if I was an agent, I think I would call by and say, hey. Well, and she all said, brokers yes, we've had did report. receive that, but there were. Then, if the broker was doing due diligence, which everybody that entered a proposal did, they called to find out who those large claimants were, were they, what the conditions were at the present, were they deceased, were the treatments completed, were they still undergoing treatments, etc. Have you seen this report? Probably not. I can't read. <coughs> so this is what, what the large claimant report looks like. And when every broker received it through the RFP, there were no notes on it. So if I'm going out to bid with other insurance companies... Can we make copies of that? Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, I knew who they were just because... So if we paid uh, if we paid Humana like a hundred thousand dollars, they paid out a hundred and eighty eight. So right. the, that's the math that we're looking at. I guess we're lucky they even got this. Well, I, the I think that the fifteen percent renewal is fair. Um, and of course, uh, my job is to make sure you're getting the most for your premium dollar. But, and we went to the other markets, and and and, and not only. Did we do it? We, we, there was additional calls made to try to get them to use relationships to go ahead and them for them to offer a proposal. I don't work for Humana. I work for y'all. That's my job. We need to recommend another company. We're going to do that, uh, and there just wasn't that option this year. So I, I can get the the claim reports. I've discovered that is an issue that I need to do for the county. We can meet and have a open conversation about any problems that come up and not and until I'm aware of them I can't address them I, I did not bring uh, my account manager here today with me who I will, will have a discussion with when I get back but, but these people uh, are, are, are paid on and help with retention they're very good at what they do and uh, I just want to tell you that there's a heightened awareness of, of getting e claim reports um, but what I'd like to talk about is what, what I was able to do with negotiating is, is get a, a better break off of the renewal that we had, how to even increase and, and get a, develop a strategy for next year's renewal to help get and make keep people healthier, engaging this group, doing something to be productive for health, this health coverage plan for next year. That's what I would like to talk about. Can we do that? Uh, so let me get this straight. So they lost eighty-eight thousand dollars or more, but at least eighty-eight thousand. Is that right? And they only went up fifteen percent. Correct. And, and 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 also, you know, the industry. what is that equivalent to in dollars? Is that like fifteen thousand? It's much more. You guys pay out the one of them. No, but I mean that that 15% increase. What dollar amount is that over what we were paying? Is it? It's like we were paying a hundred thousand. Like now we're paying hundred dollars a month per employee. Yeah, well, I'm not talking about months. If we were paying a hundred thousand, now we're paying a hundred and fifteen thousand. Would would that be right? If that was the appropriate numbers, but that's not the appropriate numbers. That's a little yeah. shooting a little low. Oh uh, yeah. Pay hey, less. How much do we pay out, Moana, for health insurance? I couldn't tell you that off the top of my head. I'm Four, sure it's close uh, to, uh, I would imagine it's close to half a million. Four hundred dollars. Four hundred and sixty-four cents per month per oh, yeah, employee. Yeah. Hundred and four. Okay. Um, here's close here's real dollars since last renewal up until June of this year. You paid in three hundred fifty-nine thousand two hundred ninety dollars in premium. You paid in that. You paid that in the Humana. Humana paid out 
$545,000. But if you look at the historical data, um, since you guys have uh, you know, been with Humana in the past, historically you guys run very, very well, um, under 85%. And so that's why, a large reason why you received a renewal just above trend. I mean, trend is 8 to 12% in itself. So they know that Carnes County, and that this isn't going to be a year you see year over year, typically. And I don't even see, there should be another claim on here. Yeah, it, well, because the one that passed the car wreck, she was undergoing <coughs> there are some treatments. There were nine pending claims. Yeah. Oh, is hers in there? Because she passed away in November, and I don't see No, her. and that's not even in that loss ratio factor. Probably because it was... I mean, and that, 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 that was considered by the other carriers as well. I think the 15% renewal we can say was a fair renewal. It, it just is. From my experience, I wish there was some... We don't see carriers taking a, a gambling like we did in years past. A lot of it has to do with the health care reform law. But uh, I think Humana, of course, is our, our, our company, and we will definitely get the claims reports that uh, twice a year, if we can get them more often because we're, uh, Humana is changing and trying to do a better